managed to come up with a implementation of just a frankly better or not better but a Voronoi implementation that allows us to get edge patterns which you cannot do with the built-in uh, noise so today we want to refine this we want to add fractal brownie motion to it um, and we want to add um, so we want to add fractal and we want to add multiple outputs because right now we're doing like this smooth step here um, but we should zero for one I'm just looking CX okay so what we're gonna want to do um, three oops so we want another output float three because we want to be able to get both the like non edge masked um, edge distance data and the edge mass edge distance data so the way we're gonna do that is make a second color And then we're gonna run a second warp here, but, 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 instead, doing it that way, we're gonna do this zero. We might actually just be able to use CX and. distance edge distance we're gonna add another output so three equals edge distance and then we're gonna do right here all right and now we can test this value plug it into here get rid of this uh oh yeah right okay um Print color, okay, so edge distance equals call two. Let's get rid of the normal for now. Add back the add this back in, but go zero to one. Minus preview this. Cool. 
two. That's what it is. There we go. Let me kind of figure out what various pieces of this are doing. Okay. So if I change this to like, oh man, this OBS shit is really annoying. Doesn't seem to make a difference, but we'll take it back to this. Uh, edge smoothing. There's something controlling the thickness. We're going to want to locate that. MD. If I switch this to 4, what happens? What about 1? A. I don't understand. <laughs> 80. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. Just looking at anything that might be causing the thresholding point two five point seven five. One seven five. All right, so this is like edge thinness, sort of. And then this is smoothing. Okay. Um, edge smoothing, we need a new input. Edge thin. Thickness. Uh, no. Thinness. Okay. Scalar. And five. And then once we get this all parameterized up, edge thinness, min edge, edge smoothing, edge thinness. Uh, okay, vf dot edge thinness, edge thinness, and then right up here, edge thinness.
put it. Spell it wrong. would do it. In this man, my dyslexia is getting worse over time it seems. Pretty cool. So this is just going to be useful in general, I think. Pretty neat. Um, so we'll go back to point five and point one. Zero, zero one, one. Okay. Edge rounding. Edge thin. This. All right. Um. Next. Go ahead and copy this, put it over here. Distance. I don't actually need this double assignment here. We can just do this. Uh, let's do this out. Because, like, if you look at what we're doing here, right, we can store these in different channels. And then we wouldn't even need a separate. So, like... Float edge mask. And it actually just makes a little bit more sense to do it this way, I think. Oops. Float distance mask Third one zero CX one minus 
piece of shit. Okay. Um, so we've got this and this. Uh, we have room for one more, which I'm not sure what we'll use yet, but for now we'll just do call. Edge mask. No, no. Float three. Edge mask. Distance mask. Zero. Or, I mean, we could really just do float four. Zero, zero. Shouldn't need this. Turn call simpler. We can do it without a second output here. Okay, that paste. Um, edge distance trash can that. Uh -huh. I believe that's one. Uh, can I undo that? I think we got to get rid of this before we go deleting things and then all right so now we can um opponent mask redefinition is fine plus the truncation is fine Vector float forth into value. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. For call. Um, Nice. All right, so that looks pretty good. We still have two more channels if we need more. Um, that gives us all the information that we're calculating from within this thing. Yeah, we can definitely do it this way. And then we can also go ahead and remove edge distance now. It's not connected to anything. Beautiful. Okay, great. So let's clean this up real quick. So just out of curiosity, if we were to return this Voronoi output, actually we can just do it in... We can just do it in the editor. 
I'm just curious. That's what red looks like. This is what green looks like. This is what blue looks like. And this is what alpha. Okay. So I'm betting if I were to component mask these three. Breakout float th three. Wait, that looks kind of like a normal map. What happens if I plug that in here? Can we derive our normal map? That would be sick. Maybe. No, we can't use it directly. That's fine. So I bet you that if I happen to multiply these three things together. Okay, I take it back. Alright, so I take it back. We'll go with what we had. We don't even need this either. Avoiding extra assignments if we don't have to do them. I'm just going to break this again. Come back over here. Okay, we got this, the distance mask, and the combined mask. Distance and edge masks. Okay. Um, and we can also do things like crank this way up. Maybe not quite that high. I think this value should actually be a derived value to maintain consistency, I suspect. Yes, that is the way. What would be our minimum here? Probably that. I doubt we can go another precision level. Again, 
uh, but that's going to be it. So, uh, math max. Beautiful. It's like Ninja Turtles. That's what it reminds me of. A Ninja Turtle slogan or a, a background. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got that. All right, and for now, we're just going to plug this in. Unplug this. Right, because we were adjusting it here, which we'll still have to do. But right now, we just want to get this Voronoi function done before we worry about trying to integrate it into like a shader for our landscape. We did have a shader uh, that we were applying to our landscape for this, but we're not going to do that yet. We're focusing on refining this Voronoi function here. In fact, we're going to get rid of everything that's not the direct output, with the exception of a couple nodes that are just useful to keep around. Um, so this is a useful node for height map uh, application, and this is a useful node for um, grabbing a, a normal out of our data. So here's our here's our actual output. Oops, oopsie. Um, here's our actual current output. So now, yes. all right, awesome. So now, and I will point out that this is 3D noise. That's the modification we got working last night. And what we're actually going to do is move this logic internal to this function so that we don't have to worry about this. Like, 
if we want to use this function in one where we just want to plug the object radius in, we can do that. If we want to use it in a custom one where we have to plug in like the planet radius, we can also do that. We don't have to worry about like swapping these nodes around. It'll just be on this node. So we're going to add a radius variable. And a base frequency scale. All right, and then we're going to plug this here, this here, and then we're going to make a, a scalar parameter frequency. Um, float three scaled position equals world position divided by radius times frequency. And this is going to become scaled position. There we go. And now frequency can change the, yep and we're off to the races so this is good because it just it kind of decouples this from this explicit implementation it's like whatever radius you're going for if this is on a sub object for instance like a sub mesh of our ocean mesh we can't use the object radius for that material because that specific mesh is small but the material is should be contiguous on the larger pattern of the entire ocean right so um so that's kind of what we're looking at all right so these are parameters edge smoothness edge rounding And we just want to make sure that that all our variable names make sense because this is something that like we'll have in our pocket forever this is a super useful little thing and we haven't like it's also in 3d so like you can apply this to 3d objects it doesn't matter what shape they are or anything like that because all of this is calculated in three dimensions Although that looked a little wonky there. Well, I don't know. It probably is doing what it's supposed to do. It just looks weird because it's on a cube. All right, so next up we need to look at getting all these variables named properly. Edge min, edge max. These are fine. Yes, 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 yes,
this is another scenario where like it's nice for our future purposes to have these values run between like zero and one. Ten feels like about the max that you would want to use. Oh, so. Edgeman, Edgemax to Capitals. Edgeman, Edgemax, and then Edge Thickness. And minus Well, I'm 
So uh, edge rounding times ten. And then six point five edge rounding at point one quarter in two three four five point one point two yeah. Oh. There's a relationship here. Oh. Derp. Edge rounding. Here for a 
Uh, it's not terrible. I guess we can go with that for the moment. Max edge rounding point zero 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 one times edge Two two five, and then if I okay, so now six um, nine. Okay, yes, yes, this is the ray. Two to five. All right, beautiful. Now everything is pretty consistent. Okay, now we need to add our fractal Brownian motion. Okay, this looks good. Save it. Copy everything. Uh, paste it back in. That's formatting. Okay, now uh, we need to add fractal Brownian motion to this, and I think that coworker is probably the best bet for that. So let's go ahead and do. Um, okay, I have a war annoy implementation in HLSL that returns the filtered all edges in the red channel and the distance gradients in the green channel. I need to add a second method similar to the main method, but that does uh, fractal FBM with the that's we should be able to input the number of phase um, frequency 
scale multiplier the octaves add inputs number of octaves frequency frequency scale multiplier for the octaves and contribution amount um, and the aggressive and the contribution amount octave. So, for example, with a with frequency scale multiplier it is set to 0.5 and contribution at 0.5 should render each successive octave at half the frequency of the previous octave and it should have half overall contribution to the end here is the current order way HLC. I guess I could have just done. Uh, I guess I could have just done this, right? Four point five point five.
But if they do it, then at least in a sense, you could give it to the Lord. Then they can give it to the Lord. And it's just about how good they can play the match. <laughs> and they tell Spirit to repent. And, you know, it's not that hard. <laughs> No, that's wrong. But it's close. This should be a flip four. This should be doing this. And this should just be returning the total value over the max value. Why are you you only accumulating the x value from uh, 
high up, but what if we need to accumulate the entire float for? We don't need this variable assignment here. Um, sample position. I think we need to do an offset as well. So, sample position. Plus cash sample position plus equals sample position times cash three sample position Is there a reason I don't have any output here? Is there a way we could add a random uh, offset to the sample position for each layer? We already have the hash function to generate random randomize. Let's see what it suggests to do with it.
if we if we don't land it, it's a good thing. If we don't want land, then we uh, you know, let's just keep it up until it's done. So it's just well, I have just this many years until I land it. It's it's done and it's they get that hit. Let's use sample position instead of X as the um, variable name inside the FBM function. Null value plus equals Voronoi times amplitude. Because I still get a point. I did what we needed to do. Did it with the the border, and then I think it was another command. I mean, we got three left now. We get one to bottom. What we last missed was flower. I think we probably have to just go back to her and then return to river. I mean, so the point is kind of the same. Like, it's been proper for all the time. Like, oh, you can tell us that. Oh, we can go left. Yeah, that's not viable. At one, it works just fine, but it's not viable for anything over that. Oh. Derp. That might actually be the problem right there. If you play against the prime deck, it is the scariest card in the game. Because all their stuff is legendary, it triggers it, primes it away. So it just lets the prime deck pop. So we're gonna have to be really careful with how much damage we pop this game. Like we can get. We get we actually did use it. Wow, that's so bad. Oh, we get the chain. so broken, it's 
All right, let's add um, and octaves float octave frequency scale float octave amplitude scale. We have dot octaves. We have dot octave frequency scale. Scale. Amplitude scale. Amplitude scale. Okay. One, two, three. Octaves. Uh, one sec. I need to check something. Um, uh, fuck. Never mind. I don't have a. Let me just finish this then. Uh, so we're almost done here. Octaves. Octave frequency scale. Octave amplitude scale. Scalar Octave Amplitude Scale Thank you. 
and they died as they died. All right, that might actually do it. That gets us kind of like a rocky texture there. Yeah. 
There you go. Nice little cracked lava texture, so now we can do things like Vector parameter. Oh, um, oops. Edge thickness still needs a bit of work here. Build up a 
All right, uh, good start, good start. I'll play with this some more tonight. Uh, I'm going to stop for now, uh, and I'll be back a little bit later. See ya.